All right, today's the day. We are working on the front subframe. And in this video, I've taken the subframe, been sitting on the tub, pull it off and start attaching a few of the components that are gonna be going up there. And as the title of this video may have suggested, we had a little bit of a screw up. And that was that the steering rack, I installed it first, the brace for it, and then found that the differential is gonna interfere with it. Not too big of a problem. This is one of the beauties of uh, building from scratch. It's always just a matter of cutting it off and uh, start over. And then once things are finally perfected and you know they're gonna work, then we can take those subframes and we'll get them powder coated and then they'll be finished. But until then, we'll just be trying and fitting things as it is. This is a prototype. Um, one thing that this uh, steering rack may have interfered with was uh, steering geometry, but I think we're gonna be just fine. It's just a matter of uh, moving it slightly forward. The only thing that was gonna interrupt was maybe the Ackerman. But this is a plate for the front hub, and I kind of had planned to be able to adjust some of this steering geometry as it was all assembled. And when I had these plates cut on the water jet, I left this little arm that's going to be the little mounting tab for the steering rack to come out and meet. And I left that, as you can see, extremely long so we can adjust the length of it to bring that pickup point for that tie rod and make our Ackerman right on so that we get that Ackerman angle correct. Anyway, let you know a little more about what we're talking about and see the process of getting those things put together. Let's go take a look at that. Here is the front subframe in its bare condition, just the tubes. So we're going to take that into the shop and the first thing we're going to do is put this little flange on that is going to be part of our roll bar assembly. Now the end of the tube cuts square so we just need to make that flange sit square at the end of the tube and to do that I had to take a little notch out of it because of that tube that comes at an angle there it needs to fit over it. So once we have it place squarely on the end of that tube. We're just going to weld the bead around the inside and not shown as I also weld the back side, but because this front side has to be ground down. So to keep the strength, the back side's welded front side ground flat. Now, another thing, this subframe mount, this top plate is thin sheet metal. And I'm going to put these gussets in just to stiffen it up. But the purpose of that subframe having such a light or thin gauge piece of metal holding on in the front and for the rear subframe is that the whole idea is to in an impact we want those subframes to detach from the car leave the tub intact so all the safety stays in the tub engine sub front subframes can all be detached from the car in a wreck but just putting these gussets in as part of the subframe just to hold it rigid in place. Now I'm going to throw on one of the lower pickup points for the lower arm. So we've got a laser set up here so I can get the bottom and the top perpendicular to each other. I'm going to put just this one pickup point on the rear lower. Once it's tacked in place, run a nice bead. Tie that thing on there. Got those two pickup points and I'll show you more about that later. And now here is the problem that we had mentioned in our title, but this is the brace we put on to hold our steering rack. Welded it in place with all the trouble of measuring, making sure this thing is nicely set. But my miscalculation was some clearance problems. Had this plate here, water jet cut to match my uh, steering rack out of a Toyota Prius. <clears throat> and I'll show you that problem later, but the differential is going to sit in this bracket made out of aluminum because it's a pretty wide expanse. Figured I'd save some weight, but I've got these little tabs that uh, water jet cut notched in there nicely. So weld those in place. 
Now you notice also on the corners of this thing, I have some steel pieces that are bolting to it. Bolt the little steel brackets to the plate, and then I can put all this in position where it needs to be, and then I will tack weld the little steel brackets. And one of the reasons for this is that there are some long studs in the back of the differential that are going to be right up against the firewall. And so to remove the differential, instead of pull out the carpet and all the inside of the car, we'll be able to just detach this plate as well. Take the differential out. So once I have that plate measured, marked in position, you can attack weld it as well. Now here we are. My mistake, that clearance problem, taking that steering rack out. Just kind of showing you how it just does not fit in there. So the new theory is I need to be able to move it slightly underneath that tube rather than out to the face of the tube. So somewhere about in here, I'll be able to put it, tip it a little bit of an angle to get that steering shaft going up towards the dashboard. And if it's right about there, I still have about three quarters of an inch I can fit. So I don't have a room for the tripod here in this corner, so you're going to get the jittery hand thing, but that's okay. I can use it to pan around. Um, with this differential setup, you'll see, and we're talking about the plate, and I have these gussets sticking out. They will have bracing coming back over and tying to the frame to stiffen it up so that we don't get the torque. Um, also, that plate just not stiff enough, so there'll be some more bracing added to it as well. Now, one thing, the you can't see the top side as this is flipped over. We're looking at the bottom, which is the top of this front so that we get the right rotation. Um, there is a vent that we'll have to seal up. And I'm wondering also if the electronic pickup for that sensor will leak. I probably have to just cap it off and just stick with the rear differential speed sensor. And I'm just going to take this drain plug out and put my vent in there. There is luckily a fill hole in this thing so that I could drain it from the fill hole if I need to using a suction pump. Now this is gonna be hard to see on video, but alignment wise, we have our output shaft here coming out. And if you can see this one bracket, this pickup point for the rear part of the lower A-arm, this little mark right here, that's our center line for the drive shaft output. So that bracket had to be right where it is to line up the differential, but the front bracket will go in later once I have the A-arm so that the spacing on that gets to be exactly right. We know that the this lead out for that lower A-arm is set up for the ball joint to be like close to it. And that will give us our center line on the bottom of the ball joint. Of course, the bottom and the upper are going to be adjustable for all of our suspension geometry. Now on the back side, another problem somehow in the measurement of this thing, and I checked it to see if it was because of the flip, but it was not. It was just somehow I got the measurements wrong, but you see, I had to redo the holes to get that lined up. So. Now this is convenient that it comes with these long studs here and these bottom holes are not threaded, but they go clear through. So that's going to allow me to add longer bolts because there's going to be another casting that I'm going to do that will come here and connect to the drive shaft that's coming out of our transfer case. So the transfer case is set up. So the output is in direct line with this thing, but we're going to have to cast a piece to adapt to the transfer case. Also, as promised, I was going to bend these coolant tubes to get moving on the tub again. And I got that done. So once the tubes are bent, went ahead and uh, cut the holes to be able to make that run. And as you can see here, it's gonna feed out just slightly behind or in front of the rear wheel and behind the wheel in the front. So here you can see just enough clearance. So when I turn lock to lock, the tire won't touch it there. Runs through the door seal into the back. Then of course, just the opposite mirror image on the other side. 
Now I also had some footage that I seem to have lost somewhere, but I did add some parts to the rear subframe. And I guess you're not going to be able to see that. But once those are attached, brought it back in. Would be nice to have one of those floors at McLaren that move all the parts around for you, but there it is. Well, as you can see, we also got those coolant lines installed into the tub. So now we can start moving ahead and getting that foam and laminations going in there. And so some of that stuff may be coming up in the upcoming videos. So as always, if you want to see those videos, go ahead and subscribe below and we will get you a reminder, or at least YouTube will get you a reminder when those videos become available. But anyway, thanks for stopping by and come back and see us again.